Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with group frequency, fr group frequency distributions uh, and I suppose the calculation of specific statistics uh, from those group frequency distribu distributions is going to concentrate on uh, how we can estimate uh, sample skewness. So in other words, given a group frequency distribution, uh, we know from the group frequency distribution that we ha could actually draw a histogram uh, of that. Okay, and I suppose the question is, how skewed is that histogram? Is it positively skewed? Is it negative, negatively skewed? Or is there no skewness at all? Uh, is it symmetrical, if that makes sense? And how the hell do we estimate uh, this particular measure of sample skewness? Well, there's a formula that we can actually use uh, to estimate sample skewness. Uh, the formula looks something like this. It's it's it looks quite complicated looking, but it's actually it's actually straightforward enough. Uh, it's S of K for skewness uh, is equal to n. That's the sample size divided by uh, n minus one times n minus 2 okay so given the sample size we can always calculate these particular values n divided by the sample size minus 1 multiplied by the sample size minus 2 so it's that particular value here uh, times uh, the sum of the sum of the x's minus the sample mean cubed okay divided by the cube of the standard deviation, so s cubed. Actually, the the skewness of a distribution is what's known as the third moment, and you can actually see in this case here the difference between the observations and the mean. We're actually calculating not sums of squares; they're sums of cubes here. Okay, so that's sort of coming naturally true here from this particular formula. But in our case, this is this formula is used when we have raw data. Okay, this is when we have raw data. Okay, uh, when we have all of the actual observations, but our data is represented uh, through a frequency distribution. Uh, in total, I suppose our total sample size here, our total sample size, is five plus ten is fifteen, plus fifteen is thirty-five. Sorry, is thirty plus fifteen is forty-five, forty-nine, fifty. So our sample size here is fifty, but we don't have the individual x's anymore. We don't have the observations. These five observations between twenty and thirty-five, we no longer have. All we know is that five of the observations are between 20 and 35, and that is a frequency of 5, if that makes sense. So we need to modify this formula to take into consideration that when we calculate the distance between an observation and the mean, uh, that there's going to be f of them distances represented in each one of these particular intervals. So the modification of the formula would look something like this. is that the sample skewness is equal to the sample size divided by n minus 1, times n minus 2, that's the sample size minus 1, times the sample size minus 2, uh, so it's still the same as what we had previously, uh, times, it's the sum of the frequencies times the x's minus the x bars cubed, divided by the standard deviation cubed, if that makes sense. Okay, so really what we need to do is we need to calculate this particular statistic, okay? And before we calculate that statistic, we have to calculate the mean value. Uh, we know the formula for the mean, the sample mean, x bar, in, from a frequency distribution perspective, is the sum of the frequencies times the observations divided by the sum of the frequencies. So, to do this, we need to know the observations. So what we'll do is, we'll just estimate the observations uh, to be the midpoints of the classes themselves, okay, to be the, these midpoints. Well, 20 plus 35, 20 plus 35 gives me 55. Uh, 55 divided by two gives me 27.5. So I'm gonna just assume from now on that 27.5, okay, that these five observations, albeit they fall within the interval from 20 to 35, we're just gonna assume that they're actually the value 27.5. Five, okay, so we're losing some. Uh, there's going, we're going to be introducing some error here, but this is the way we always calculate the mean in anyway. So it'll be these values as well that we use when we're calculating the skewness, the sample skewness. Okay, 35 plus 50 is 85. 85 divided by 2 is 42.5. Okay, and we continue to add the lower bound to the upper bound and divide by 2. This gives us 57.5, and uh, then we have 72.5, then we have 87.5. And finally, we're going to have 102, 102.5. These are the midpoints of each of these respective classes, okay? So now what we can actually do is we can calculate the sample mean. To calculate the sample mean, we need the sum of the frequencies. We have that here, the 50, that's the sum of the frequencies. We need the sum of the product of the frequencies times the midpoints, okay? So we need to calculate what f of x is, okay? So we need to calculate this f of x value. I'll just grab my calculator here. The first f is 5. 
Uh, I'll move it over here so there's no, there's, no, there's no glare on it. It's 5, it needs to be multiplied by 27.5, which gives us a value of 137.5. So that's 137.5. Then we have 10 times 42.5 is 425. We have 15 times 57.5 is going to give us a value of 862.5. We have 15 times 72. 5 is going to give us a value of 1087.5 we have 4 times 87.5 4 times 87.5 is going to give us a value of 350 uh, and then we have 1 times uh, 102.5 that's 102.5 gives us 102.5 now for the sample mean we need the sum of the frequencies times the x's so we're, now, we're going to need the sum of this column uh, so that's going to be 147.5 plus 425, plus 462.5, plus 187.5, plus 350, plus 102.5, gives us a total value of 2,000, 2,565. This is the sum of the frequencies times the x's. So now we can calculate the sample mean. The sample mean is simply equal to the, the sum of the frequencies times the x's, which is 2565, divided by divided by 50 okay so let's divide our last uh, summation divide that by 50 which gives us a sample mean of approximately 51.3 actually i'm just going to round that to the nearest whole number okay so this is approximately uh, actually let's leave it it's approximately it is equal to 51.3 so that's our sample mean so now that we have our sample mean, we can start to do our sums of squares. We can start to do our distances, our x minus our x bars. We'll do x minus x bars squared, and then we'll do cubes, okay? So we'll calculate the sample standard deviation. The sample standard de deviation, s, is equal to the sum of the frequencies times the x's minus the x bars squared, divided by the sum of the frequencies minus 1. And it's the square root of that. So we need to calculate our sample standard deviation. 